Hello everyone, my name is David. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build this cool and dynamic designer profile website. With all of these designer profiles, when you hover on this banner page, you will see this uh, hover effects. And when you click on one of those profiles, you will see that uh, the designer's profile gets expanded. It shows the full information and details of that person. When you click on the close button, that's in close off. And you can go on to the next one, open it, expand all information, and close it off. Go back to the original position. The beauty of this website design is that I use the CSS grid. There is no third-party library incurred in this project, purely CSS grid. So these things are all designed and created by grid. And also, uh, the hidden effect was controlled by the vanilla JavaScript. Again, this is a purely vanilla JavaScript, no third-party library as well. Okay. So other than that, this one can be perfectly presented on the full page. If I turn on the mobile page, as you can see, this one looks pretty nice and all decent on the mobile side as well with all the grid effect shrinks to the proper size. And if you click on one of those, it expands to the proper position as well. Close it off, try another one, expand it, close it off. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a cool website using CSS grid with all of those hidden content that can be controlled by vanilla JavaScript. If you are interested in this project, please subscribe my channel and let's go ahead and build it right now. So to quickly start off the project, what we're going to do is then we're going to create an empty folder inside your um, Visual Studio editor. You can use any editor you want, but the one I use is the Visual Studio code. And once you create that project folder, inside that folder, we're going to create a couple of files and subfolders to hold our details. So the first one we're going to create is called index.html. So that's going to be our root file. And the second one, we're going to create a folder called CSS. Inside the CSS, we'll create a file called style. Dot CSS, enter. So and then a new folder called JS to hold our JavaScript file, and inside it will create one called main.js. And the last but not least is our image folder, because we're gonna have many designers' image and to be loaded on our banner page. So we're gonna have a folder to hold all of those images. So once we have those three files done, just have a look. These are the three we just created. And then inside your root file, the HTML. Uh, we're just going to key in exclamation mark on your keyboard and press tab to create a boilerplate which will be used to um, hold our documents on our browser and you can change the title over here let's just say that uh, the title of the project can be uh, profiles uh, website landing page like that and from here we're going to do some um, preparation of the settings for this project instead of coding straight away so the first thing we're going to do is to link in those two files we just created. One is the CSS, the other one is the JS. So above that title, what we're going to do is we're going to create a link, link.css. So that's going to be the folder inside our CSS, style.css. So you just key in those things to link that file in. So whatever you use or type in this CSS file will be applied to this HTML file. So that's one thing we're going to do. The other thing is that Right above the closing tag of the body, we create a script file to load in our JavaScript. We just select the last one and then period slash to find the current folder. Going to the JS folder, tap in the main.js file, which is the one we just created. Okay, so now you have your CSS file linked in and also you have your main.js file linked in. We are ready to start. And the first thing we want to do if we look at the original page is that we're going to have to create a banner and use that banner to hold the grid. Inside the grid, we're going to have different blocks. Um, we have one, two, three on the first row, and also we have a four and five on the second row, and the last row. So we're going to create a columns and rows using CSS grid. And to start off this project, what we're going to do is the first we're going to create a test message. Let's just say hello, save it, and then we press the go alive. Use that go alive function to trigger. This project on your browser, as you can see, the hello world we just tap in has been successfully started. And then we're going back. Whatever you do, whatever you modify on your page, on your uh, HTML or CSS files, the browser will be um, loaded accordingly because we use the live server. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is to do some presettings for our CSS. So going to your CSS file, the first thing we want to do is to import the CSS font for this project. So I'm just going to use the link that I prepared before. But I tell you, you go into the Google font. Google font, you just type in Google font on your uh, Google researcher engine. 
and then you find the Roboto inside the Google font. So in this project, we use the Roboto. But if you use other type of font that you favor, uh, it's absolutely up to you. Okay, so once we import that Roboto, hit enter. Start from the next line, we're gonna do some settings for our entire page. So we just key in that star sign, basically means that we're gonna apply this thing to the entire page. We say the margin, we wanna define it to zero, so we're gonna remove off any naturally built margin. And then the second thing is the padding. We're gonna remove all the paddings as well. So the next thing is going to be the box sizing. We're gonna say the box border box, save it. So now we have this three line of code. If you're going back to your browser, you will see that hello uh, changes a bit of different from before. I'll show you what's the difference. We'll just temporarily comment these three lines out and you will see, when you go back to the browser, you will see there's a naturally built margin and paddings above and the left of the hello world. Okay, so you will, you will see the space between um, the edge of the browser and the text world. But if you put in those three lines and you go back to see this hello is that tightly touched to the edge of the browser, all the paddings and margins are gone, okay? So this is what is three lines are for. And then the second thing what we're gonna do is to define our root color. So we use that uh, root feature, curly braces, and then we define uh, our theme color and a variable name called a primary, and that's our color. So the color is something between the purple and the black, so I just pick this one as our background color, okay? And we save it. So once we've done that, we're going to define our body because so far, we close this off. We open the style in a new page and we close this off. So far, if you're going back to the body, you will see that uh, we don't have many tags in it, okay? The body is the main tag we have to define first. So here we say body. So here we type in a position relative. And then we want to set the background of our body to the primary color we just defined. So we say VAR stands for variable primary. So this is how you're gonna use the variable you define in your root. And next one is going to be our font. So we say font family. We wanna use the font that we imported, which is the Roboto one. So the way to do so is to say Roboto like that. And then we want to, the body to take the whole width. So we say width 100%. And we want the minimum height of 100 feet h. It does stand for, at the minimum, we want the height of the body to be 100% of the vertical screen. It's the screen size that we use to measure. And then we say overflow hidden. So we want to hide everything, overflow the, the body part. And then the transition leave this to one second. Okay, so now we have that body predefined. So going back to our HTML, and we now we start to do something here. Delete the testing words that we used before and then we create a new class called banner. So this is going to use to hold all of our grid. And to, to define that banner, what we're gonna do in the CSS is we say banner width 100%, height 100 feet h, same as the body. The key thing to, to, to say is that we have to use display grid for this project because inside the banner, all the blocks you are seeing from the original, a grilled item, okay? This is a, not just a flexible item, this is a grilled item. Well, some people say that we can use a display flex to do this project, I agree. You can do in that way, but it's probably gonna cost you more lines of code. But if you do with the grilled, it's gonna be a very easy project to start off. And the next thing is that we want to set out the grilled by columns. So we say grilled template columns, and we say that um, repeat. So we divide the whole project into um, three columns and each will take one column, so one fraction, okay? And we want the things to have some gaps between different columns and items, so we say grill the gap. And let's just set that to 10 pixels. Last thing is that we want to hide the things that overflowed, so we say overflow hidden, okay? So now if we're going back to the browser and nothing gonna be changed because we haven't added any items, but from the original one, you will see the gaps between the two blocks and that 10 pixel is used for that gap later on, okay? So now we have that done. We're going back to our HTML and then inside here, we start to set our items uh, for, for all the grid. But before we do so, we're gonna import all the images we're gonna load uh, for this project. And what I will do, I'll just copy and paste in those images that I prepared before. And by the way, this is just some sample images I found uh, looks pretty cool and decent. 
uh, you can use your own images. You don't have to use mine. The image is up to you. Okay, and and images you might use this um, project template for hold designer profiles, or you want to use it to hold other professional profiles, or it, or it is not for the people for other kind of things. It's all okay. Okay, it's up to you. But I will you I will leave that link for these images uh, down in the description. So if you want to follow exactly what I do in this project, you can download those images as well. Okay, so we close that off. And inside the banner, we're gonna create our grill item. So the way to do so is to create a new class called div item, and we say that it's going to be the one. So inside here, there's a couple of things we're gonna hold. If you look at our original project, one is the background image, the other one is the title of that designer, and then with an um, arrow icon. And also for that specific grilled item, if you click on it, it'll have a profile description that you used to be hidden but now presented on the browser and then also a close off button okay there's a couple of things we have to load and we're going back to our banner in item one we say that we want to link in that image so we create an image tag and we link in the first image we're going to use is our women one okay that's that close this off the second thing we want to do is that uh, the button because we're going to have our name button so i use a h4 and give a class name called name, which is used to load our um, designer's name. And the first name we're gonna use, this is just some random designer name that I created, it has no meaning at all, okay? You don't have to use the same one, you can use your own um, profile names. And uh, another thing is that we're gonna put in an arrow uh, on the right-hand side of that designer name. And the arrow, the arrow is an icon, so in this project, we're gonna use the bootstrap icon to do so. So what I will do, I'll show you, on the Bootstrap icon page, you just go to Google and you type in Bootstrap icon, the first result will be this page. Keep scrolling down to the bottom and you will see there's a thing called a CDN. This is how you import that Bootstrap icon uh, using the CDN approach. So we just click on the copy. So you can copy this one to your clickboard. Going back to your editor and then above that customize the CSS link, we just paste in this bootstrap icon, okay? Uh, it's uh, a very good habit to put that uh, external CSS above the customized CSS. Because later on, if you want to do some modifications to that one, the, the one that comes later will override the comes before, okay? So this is how we import it. Once you import it, you can do that. So we're going back to the bootstrap icon. And then here we say arrow. Hopefully we can quickly find out that right arrow with a square, so this is the one I'm going to using, uh, or this one. So that one is the fill one, that one is the non-fill one, okay? We click on this one, copy that, going back to the editor, and then we put on the right of our designer name. So now, you will have your name there. If we're going back to the browser, you will see that things there, and uh, actually the images actually probably covers the text words that we just write, but I'll fix it with the CSS. So now we have the images done, we have the name done, and um, we have our icons imported. The next job is to do a bit of a CSS for that one. So going back to our CSS, we say banner.item. So now we're gonna give some general definition to all the items on our grid, but eventually there will be some differences between each of them. Some of them might look bigger, some, some of them might look uh, smaller or narrower, uh, but we can use the later CSS to override the main one, but we have to do a, a general setting for all of them because they, they do share some of the common features. And this one we say position, relative. The next line we're all gonna define the width of them. It's going to take one third of the horizontal screen, so that's gonna be 33% uh, VW. VW means that uh, we have the screen size screen size width, 33 means 33 percent, so that's going to be one third, or nearly one third. And now we say overflow hidden, because we don't want to, those images to jump out of our item box area. Give that a small border radius to make it not that sharp, five pixels. And then later on, we're going to do some animations to that grilled item, so we say transition, is in out, half second. Save that. Now if you're going back, you will see that the width has been changed to one third. It's exactly one third. 
However, um, the height isn't correct it's because we only have one item inside the grid. If we have a multiple things, the grid will adjust the height automatically. Okay, so this is how we do it. And the next thing we want to do is to make make sure we define the images as well. So we say banner dot item image position relative width one hundred percent height one hundred percent object fit cover object position center. Okay, so that's how we can properly adjust the size and position of our images. So now you can see that thing looks a, um, a bit better. And that's our first item. Okay, other than that first item, we want to import all the items. So what I'm going to, going to do is to quickly copy this one. And below that, we're going to paste it in and change this one, give it a cu customized class name too, because later on we're going to do some customized definition for those as well. So the item class is used to do the general setting. The specific class name is to use the customized uh, setting in a CSS page or the JavaScript. And the second one, we're going to import the, the second image. And the name of that designer is going to be changed as well to a different one, like that. I just uh, shrink that one down. So now we have our second one in. So if we look at our banner, you will see the second one comes in and also a bit of a gap between them. That's the 10 pixel for this one. And very quickly, we're going to copy this one again. Below it, we'll see the item three. Change that to the third image of women. And also we probably want to change the designer name. These are all randomly created designer name. And going back, you will see the third one comes in. The beauty with the grill is that it comes to give you a very cool visual effect that no other CSS layouts can be easily presented to you. But well, this one looks really cool. So we just keep going. And this one is going to be our four. And we change that one to... Um, actually, the, we can change this one to the women four. Later on, I will show you how do we add in those text words. Because if you look at the original project, one, two, three, four, the four one should be a text word to show our header, the title of the page, instead of images. But right now, we're not going to touch that. We we'll just show all the images so far. So we can say this one is going to be women four. And going back, you will see that women four images has been loaded. And this thing automatically adjusted. Doesn't matter how much you have, because the grid is defined by column. It only comes with comes in at the three columns all the time. If you have more images load in, it will automatically separate the images into three columns. But it doesn't matter how many rows you have, it will load those images row by rows, but always be in a template of three columns. This is what it's for. Okay, so we have the four in, and now the next one. Copy this one. We'll put in our five. So this one is going to be women five. And we give that women five a new designer name. Save it. Going back to the browser, you will see the fifth one has been loaded, added to the right hand side of the fourth one. And then below it, this one going to be a six. The sixth one we're going to use that uh, because we run out of the women's image. We're going to use the men's image. And we're going to use the man one image. And also, we're going to change the designer name to that one. This is going to be our six. Now, we're going back, you will see the man one just being imported. Okay, that's that. And the next one is going to be uh, the seven. The seven one, we're going to use the man two. And we're going to change the designer name again, just trying to make it dynamic. And that one comes in. As you can see, as soon as we import the seven one, a third row has been added to the browser straight away. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to define how high I want each item to be, because it'll cover up the entire height eventually. You only need to worry about in the grid system, worry about in this template, we're going to have three columns all the time. 
So the more images you add in, the more row you will have. That's it. Okay, it's a really cool way of uh, of uh, designing a profile page or even a newspaper page. Say, for example, you want to use this uh, template to hold your newspaper, some uh, blogs or news. That's absolutely okay. You can just present your stories, your blogs, your news right over here. And the more you have, you just automatically load it up in your page. But it's always been separated into three columns. It's absolutely cool. Okay, so now you have that one, which is your seven. And then you're going for one more, a couple more. So this one is going to be your eight. And the eight one is going to be the main three image. And we're going to give a new name to that one as well. So this one is going to be that. Okay. Going back, you will see the new images has been added in on the third row. Um, however, if you look at the original design, the row height is different. Okay. This one looks pretty smaller. This one is smaller as well than the other three. So later on, I'm going to show you how you can customize the height and width of each grilled item to make them look more dynamic and cooler. But so far, we just put all the images in to show you the overall effect. And on the next one, it's going to be our last image. Let's say nine. This one is going to be our main four. And then we give it a new designer name, randomly created. Going back, as you can see, we have all of our nine images loaded in the grill system on our browser. Even without any other things, this looks cool already with the 10% gaps between them. This looks cool already. Okay, so but we're not going to stop here. We're going to make this project even better. So I will do some customization to the grill with a height to different items, and I will show you now. So in our CSS file, I'm just going to shrink this one down a bit, bring this up. We're going to do some customization for different grilled item. And the way to do so is to use banner item colon nth of type. This is one of the CSS feature. You can use this one to define um, which one, which type of this uh, item that you want to customize. Because we have the item, let's see how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine items with the same class name. This one allow you to find the one that you want. Uh, you can use this one if you say ends of type one, that will refer to the first one of the item, which is this one. If you change it to two, that'll be the second one. Okay, so this is how it works. So once you have that, we'll say the first one we wanted to have a grilled row, not inherent, but we want to have a one slash three. Okay, so this means that it starts from the one and the finish at three. So this is the start and this is the finish and you will use a slash to separate them out. So once we have that, you will see there's no big change, but it will define that uh, um, row covers from the one to three. It goes a bit of a longer, okay? And the remaining stuff without any definition will adjust automatically. Unless you define them specifically, it looks exactly as how you want. Okay, now we have the first one. We're just gonna do a bit more, say for example, use a comma, we say the the second one and the third one, we save it. So for the grilled item one, two, three, we want them all look the same with the grilled row start from one and finish at three. So now we're going back, you will see that uh, the first three items are grows a bit of a larger. The remaining adjust automatically. This looks exactly the same as this one. Okay, probably some difference, but we got the idea. So as soon as we have that, we are going to define our fourth one. So far, if you look at our see the HTML files, the fourth one is the image. But eventually, we want the fourth one to be a word okay, that shows the title of the banner. Uh, how do we do that? So we're going back to our HTML file. And we find that the fourth one, we delete the image. And also, we delete the, the name title. We create a new thing here called H2. Give it a class name, title, and we say, Creative designer, plural. Okay, so that's it. The HTML is going to be really simple, but uh, it'll cost more lines in the CSS. So fix that. So here, we're just going to copy this line, and we change it to four, and we say the grilled item, <coughs> grilled column. First, we're going to define a grilled column. 
So we, because we wanted to take two columns instead of one, as you could see, in the original design, it comes the first column, also the second column, okay? So now, this one only take the first column. We wanted to cover the whole thing. So here we say the column we're going to take from one and finish at three. That'll take the whole column, the two, whole two columns. We're going back, you'll see this one covers the two. This is the, the one refer to the starting edge, the starting edge one, the middle one will be two, the last edge will be three, so one, two, three. That's how they define it. Start from one and finish at three. And then we want that grilled row to be three slash four. Start from three and finish at four. Okay, that's it. And the most important thing we have to redefine is width. Because previously, the width of each grilled item is only 33% of the, the horizontal width of the screen. But now this one covers two columns, so the width of it must be 62% of the horizontal screen. So 60, 66 VW. And now we're going back, we see there's no much di big difference, but let's just say that these two grilled items have been perfectly connected to each other. This is a whole thing, not a separate two items. This is a whole grilled item that takes two columns and one row, okay? And the next one we're going to do, inside that grilled item, we want to have a display of flags, okay? Inside that grilled item, we want to have a display of flags. And a justify content of center, and also the line items center. So this is how we do the definition. So once we have that, we can do the title of the banner page, okay? So let's title. We want the color to be white. As soon as you have that going back, you will see that one's there. It sits right in the middle. That's because we set inside the fourth grilled item a display flex and also the position center. We want the title to be bigger. So we say font size to be 8 RAM. And we're going back, you will see this one is much larger, looks much better. And we give a Z index. 900. Z index is used to control the order of the item being shown on your browser. The higher the Z index, um, the more likely that item will be shown on the top of other items. Okay? But we used the, the order of the number, the sequence of the number to adjust the layer. Which one shows on the top, which one will be covered by other people. So this is what it is for. And we have that. Another thing we haven't noticed so far is that the name thing. We have that uh, H4 class name, but this name will never be seen anywhere on our browser. That's because it has been covered by the image. So we do a bit of a definition to that one. So we say banner item the name, and we say position absolute. Well, we want it to have a bit of a t um, space distance from the top of 50% and distance from the left of 20%. I want to have a color of white and font size two and a half RAM cursor pointer and the last one Z index is the same 900 okay so once we have that name done we're going back you will see that name is showing at the specific position that we want on each grilled item however if you compare the original one and the, the, the one that we designed the remaining grilled item are not showing very correctly, at least uh, you're not taking the whole space. We have to adjust this. Otherwise, you will have, uh, if you have more images to load in, you can leave it like that, and the more images load in will just refill, will just fill the empty space. But so far, we only have these images, um, so we have to fix the space, otherwise it looks pretty ugly to me. So what we can do, we're going back a bit. Previously, we are left at type 4, so now we're just going to fix uh, the type 5. So copy this one. So this one, we change it to 5. 5, we want it to be a grilled row. Uh, let's say it starts from 3 and finish at 4. So going back, you will see that one is correct, sitting there. We just copy the entire thing, save it more time. And uh, the 6th one, we want it to start from 4 and finish at 6. 4 to 6, the row is going to take 2 rows, and we're going back, we'll see this one takes a bit larger, okay? 
and the seven one is going to be the same. So we're just gonna say copy that. This one change it to seven. And seven one is the same. Okay. And now the remaining two has been left off and it covers up the remaining space automatically. You don't have to do anything to touch it. Or you want to set the row um, starting and finish point is absolutely okay. But uh, it, it looks all good now. You don't have to touch it. Okay. Right. We now we have the, uh, the layout for the grid all finished. The next job is to do the cover effect because e, the hover effect, if you look at the original one, the original one, if you hover on each grid item, it has a bit of a darker hovering effect. That looks the project that looks much nicer and allow the user to know that this one is probably clickable. Otherwise, the user don't have the motivation to click on it. We have to do the same. And the way to do so is to use the pseudo element for the item. So we found our item inside our CSS. And we create a pseudo element called after. So we say banner dot item, double colon after. And then position absolute content quotation top zero, left zero. This is like the conventional way of doing a, a pseudo element to cover the entire page. You're starting from the top left corner. That's why we make those two positions zero. And then you want your um, area to take the whole width and the whole height. So we set those to 100%. And then Z index give a bit of a more 1000. So that'll sit on top of others. Uh, let's say probably not over here. Later on, we're going to adjust that. Let's just do the background first. The background is not a pure black. If you see this one, it's going to be a semi-transparent black color. So the way to do so is to use RGBA, another way of defining your color. So there's going to be 0, 0, 0. Triple 0 means black. The alpha means how transparent you want it to be. We want it to be 50% transparent. So give the 0 0.5. Okay. So now if we're going back. It has that. Um, black shadow on top of it, okay? But we want it to be shown only when the mouse hovering on the grid item, not all the time. So we're gonna, the way to do so is that we're going to first hit it. So we say visibility hidden. So we hide this item first, and we'll make sure that our opacity goes to zero to make it transparent. And later on, we're going to say banner.item. If the item is on a hover effect, that pseudo element after is going to show. Okay, so here we will say that uh, opacity one make it solid, non-transparent, and also visibility visible. Okay, so now we're going back here. If we hover on it, you will see this one has that perfect hover effect. It changes uh, straight away without any transitional time. This is exactly what I want. I wanted to change it quick. That much that looks very cool. It give you that flink effect. Okay. So now we have that thing done. The next job, if you look at our original project, is the click event. We click on the name of the designer. It expand that information box to the whole page and load a bit of more paragraph as a description of that person. How do we achieve that? That is going to incur a bit of a JavaScript. And also, down the bottom here on the uh, bottom right corner, you will see this close off button that will allow you to close off this page. Okay, and going back to the original banner. There's a couple of things to do. First, let's say the click events for that name and showing off the entire page. It is actually a, a toggle between uh, one type of status and another. So originally, um, the, the grid item will be on a non-active status. So once you click on the person's name, it'll trigger the active status of that grid item. So we're going to have to set a new class name to allow this effect to change in the CSS. And that class name is called active. Okay. So we're going back here, and we're just going to say that uh, <clears throat> on active, we want the item uh, to be expanded and it looks much larger. So below that item class, we create a new one called banner.item and active. So to make sure that the active item to take the whole width and height of that uh, banner, we apply the same logic of the after pseudo element. So here we say position. What is our act here? We're going to make the grid item position absolute. And we say top zero, left zero. 
So that'll make this item start off from the top left corner. And then we say it's going to take the whole 100% width and the whole 100% height. And Z index, we're going to make sure it stands out this time, 1000. And then we we'll save it. We're going back, you will see that nothing changed. But let's just test it out. We'll, get, we'll manually give an active class to the first item. So once you put on this active class, it supposedly trigger this part of the code. Sorry, this part of the code. It should expand and take the whole area of the banner and stand out on top of all others. Let's see. Wow, it's there. Okay. So now this item is uh, taking the whole width and height of the screen, and also the name is there. At least we achieve our purpose. Going back to the editor, we delete that sofa because we're going to use JavaScript to, to trigger this one instead of a hard code those active class name. Well, but let's just think about what else we should, we're supposed to see when this thing is not active. Let's just click, click this off. Click off the original one. When we click on the original one, and you will see when it's not active, the title, the name of that designer actually grows much larger than before. And also, we're going to have a paragraph for description. And also, on active, we're going to show that close off button. But once it's non active, that close off button should disappear. Okay? So, close this off. That one disappears. And this one going to much smaller. And that one shows. That one goes to a much larger title. Close off. Okay? So, a couple of things we're going to have to fix. I'm just going to use the first one as an example. And the remaining one, I'm just going to copy and paste. So, to show that paragraph, we must have the paragraph first. So what I will do, I will create a new class name below that image and a paragraph called description. Description tab. And inside that description, we're just going to put in that person's description. This is a lorium text words with a 50 words, I think. So you could just uh, use the lorium. Um, but if you do have the, the concrete description of your target row, you could that, just put that concrete text words in over here. And also, let's give a customized class name of one. These have to match up. Item one using the description one. So later on, we're going to handle this with JavaScript. Okay. So now we have a description for that one. If you're going back, it's not showing anywhere because um, the images and all the text words have a much higher in Z index, which will cover the paragraph beneath it. And what we'll do, we'll do a bit of a CSS for that description for it to look nicer. So here we say banner item description. Give it a definition to it. So we want to make sure a position to absolute as well. And the top distance 20%, left distance 50%. And then we adjust it to the middle. We say that transform, translate. X means horizontally, back by 50%. The data align, these two lines combined together, we'll make sure it sits right in the middle. And we want to make sure that the width of that paragraph only takes 70% of the screen width, otherwise it's too wide. Give a color of white, font size 1.3, RAM. Line height, 2 RAM, font weight, 300, opacity, 0, visibility, hidden. Right? So we have that description done. And when once we go back, it's still not showing because currently um, we are hidden it with that hidden. If I remove this off, you will see that paragraph is there. Okay, the reason why I hide it first is because only when the item is unactive, that paragraph should show. Otherwise, it's supposed to be hidden, right? So we say another way. This we will say that a banner. Dot item. Dot description. Dot active. We also set a active class for that one, so it will show when it's on active class. I'll pass the one. Visibility visible, Z index 1000. Okay, so now 
this thing should be working when it's on active. The next job, the next job is to uh, create our JavaScript file over here to toggle the active class of each. So here in the main, what we can do, the first is, is to toggle the active banner. And we're going to create a function name called toggle background active. And what I will do, I'll copy and paste in the JavaScript that I prepared and explain it for you. So what this part does is we create a class name called a banner navigator to see which one you want to uh, toggle the active class on. First, we select all the items inside our document and put them into a class list called items. So by doing this row, it's going to select all the items. This is the first one, the second one, the third one, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then we're going to select all the descriptions, like this one. This is going to be description one. Later on, we're going to have description two and three and four, all of them. And for each of the items, we first we want to toggle the active class name. But before we do so, we're going to remove the class name of active for all of them. And we're going to double check if this is the one that we actually click on. If it's the one that we click on that contains the active name, this is why I put in here, this is one, this is two. If it's the class name contains that name, we're going to trigger the active class name on it. And the same logic for the description. Okay, so that's how we do it. And the second one is going to tell you how do we trigger the click events. This is not a final, final way of using that. This is just a function that we're going to use inside our another JavaScript. And the second one is going to be switch background. Switch our background. I'm going to copy and paste in the thing that I prepare. So here you will say when the windows, we add an events listener to the window. And when the window gets loaded, basically means that the web page gets loaded, we're going to find all of our buttons. The buttons will be our name, which is this one all the names, the designer's name, because this is the one that we're going to use to click on to trigger the banner toggle events. See, when I click on this one, that triggers the events, close off. Click on the second one, that triggers the, the events, that toggle off. So the name is going to be clickable. Going back. And we found all of those names that, as a button. The next step is going to be for each button, when we, cl when we click on that one, we're going to add a click events listener, prevents the default behavior. And for each of those buttons, we're going to first remove the active class because when the button or the name is on active, it's going to expand as well. See, when the name is on active, it's actually going much larger in terms of the font size. When it's non-active, the font size of the title is going to be smaller. Okay, this is what, uh, what this is for. We only want to make sure the one that you click on will be added a active class name. And also here, the key thing is that we're going to use a property called get attributes data target to find which one we actually click on. In that way, we'll know which grilled item we are supposed to expand. Otherwise, once you trigger the active class, all of those grilled items will be added a active class name. But we only want to add the active class name to the one that we click on. And the, one, the way to find the one that we click on is to use the get attribute data target. So here, going back to our original document and inside our name part here we're going to add a property called data target so the first one is going to be one and the second one is going to be two so on and so forth okay and once we have that so this part is done so i think about the logic the data target is the property of that h4 title Get attribute data target is going to get what? It's going to get this one as a result. Once we have that one, this one is going to be passed as a parameter into the banner navigation function over here. So this one gets passed in. And then it's going to be used here. For each item, if that item class name contains that one, that the one item will be added a active class name. And if you look at that, here in item, the first one that contains the one. Only when we click on the, the, the first one, this one, we're going to 
retrieve this one as a result, and that one is going to match this one, match this one. So those three will be all linked up together to make sure this thing working. Okay, this is the logic of the JavaScript. We use a thing uh, to find to create a reference, and here we're going to consume that reference. Okay. All right. So we we done that, and let's see what else we left. Okay. Uh, let's just go back to the browser to see if it works out. But before so, we have to finalize all of those uh, HTML code because so far we only have one data target. You wouldn't be able to work unless you add all of those data targets to it. So here we're just going to copy the first one. We're going to find uh, the second one here, which is that one. This is going to be our two. The third one is going to be our three. And we just keep going. Find our fifth one, H4. It's going to be our five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Yep. So we have added all of our data target. And on the JavaScript, uh, once we have the button for each, and then it'll find each of the data target inside that button, which is our name. So going back to the browser to see if it works. Uh, reload it a bit. So far it's not working. Let's just check out what's the reason. There must be some property we haven't added on yet. Uh, line 35, line 30, cannot read the property of no. Uh, that's because we, we added something that we haven't built yet, like the close button. Uh, so temporarily, I fixed that error by comments out every, everything to do with close, because we, so far we haven't built that close button yet. So anything to do with the close, I comment that out. Only leave the one with our uh, click button. And now going back to the browser, reload it, click on the first one, you'll see this one gets expanded, and that paragraph shows. However, the title, the font size isn't correct. We're going to fix it very quick in the CSS. And I refresh it, going back to the original. I click on the second one, you will see that, that name changes accordingly. I click on the third one, that name changes accordingly. The reason why the paragraph only shows on the first one is because uh, going back to our HTML, so we only added the paragraph to the first one. We haven't done so for the remaining stuff. And very quickly, we're just going to copy this one. This is going to be our first one. And then we put it into our second one and make sure they change the class name to two. That one there. And then going to the third one below that image, change this one to three. And then we're going to the fourth one. Doesn't contain anything of those, so we just leave it. The fifth one. This one is going to be five. Just make sure the target and the class name must match for this thing to work. If you name this incorrectly, the JavaScript won't work. And this one is going to be six. And this one is going to be seven. And the next one, eight. The last but not least, nine. Okay, so we manually add down those uh, paragraphs. Um, in the reality, in real work project, you don't have to worry about this manual pasting because all the, all the data should come from the, the database, like the paragraphs. Okay, we retrieve the data from the database and we mapped it into the DOM elements. But so far, it's just for demonstration purpose. We, we have to manually create all of those uh, grilled items. So that's why I keep copy and paste. Once it's done, we're going back. Click on the second one, you will see that paragraphs there. We have to refresh the page to make sure that thing disappear. The third one, this one, all good. Okay, even the last one is working so well. The next job is going to fix the the font size of our title because once it's unactive, this one should looks larger. And the way to do so is to find our name because the name is used 
to hold that title. And we want to put a separate class for it. So we say dot banner dot item dot name active. We'll say uh, left to fifty percent transform translate x minus fifty percent. And we say font size. Previously that was two and a half RAM and we expanded double with a five RAM and we want to make sure that Z index is one thousand to make sure it stands out on top. Okay. And remember in our JavaScript when we select the name and uh, store the names uh, in the cl class list as the buttons and we loop through all of the buttons, once it's click on Supposedly, the one that we click on should be added a class name of active. This is how we trigger this part of the CSS code. Okay, you have to look at these two lines to match up. So once we've done that, you will see this one grow larger automatically. So we just refresh it, try the third one. You can see this one is much larger, much bigger, and it's sitting right in the middle. Okay, so we now we fix that. But uh, another problem is. If you look at uh, this uh, banner page, only when my mouse hover on it, that black dark shadow is going to show. When I leave the mouse off the browser, it looks lighter. When it looks lighter, the text box and the title actually disappear. It looks very blurry. We have to fix this issue. So it doesn't matter. So when the banner gets expanded, it doesn't matter if I leave my mouse on or off, that black dark shadow should always be shown to make sure we have sufficient color contrast to see this text world. Okay, so it's a very easy job. We're just going to find our item here. We define that item on hover, the pseudo element is going to show. We're just going to add one more line by saying dot banner dot item active and that after is shown as well. So once it's done, you will see that thing stay, that black shadow stay. Doesn't matter if I uh, leave my mouse on or off, this is my mouse on, I leave it outside the browser, that black shadow stays. Once it stays, you will see the sufficient color contrast to show all the information and text words. Okay, all done. So far we nearly finished the project. What one last thing is that whenever we opened up this banner page, expanding all the information, we have to refresh the page to close it off. We need a close button over here that allows the user to close off this page. Okay, so we're going to build a close off button. Going back to our HTML, and we're going to first create our DOM element. And the position we're going to put that close button is right at the top, just in case that we lose it in the end. So, right above everything, we put it over here, and we say H, give a class name, it's going to be the anchor tag, close, tab, and we're going to use the icon. So we're going back to that bootstrap thing, going back to icons. And here we just search uh, the clothes. Let's see if we can find a good one. I use the clothes field, but you could use anything you want. Copy it back to the editor, put it in. Okay, so this is where we put our um, close button. And the reason why I put it at the right top is because the close button is going to be positioned absolute in the end. So it doesn't matter where you put on the DOM. It's going to refer to its parent component, which is the banner in the end. So if you put at the, the far bottom over here, which is also OK, as long as it's contained in the banner. All right. So now we're going back to the editor, the CSS file. And we're going to be, do a bit of a coding for that co close class. And we say banner close. I'm going to say position absolute and bottom 100% and right 100% and color that's going to be um, a white color. Font size we want to make sure it's a bit of a larger so it's noticeable otherwise the user wouldn't be able to see it. Z index we're going to make an even higher Z index to make sure it really really sits on top of every other component. 
And firstly, we're going to hide this close button when the banner is on a normal status. So we say opacity zero, because remember, look at the original one. On the original one project, when the banner shows the all the grilled item, the close button should disappear, should be hidden. Otherwise, it looks really weird. Why are we showing the close button here? Okay. So only when we show the expanded information, that close button gets to see. And we're going to apply this logic here. Opacity zero, visibility hidden. Transition is in out half second. All right. So we have that. And then we're going to set another class close active. Oops. Where the item comes in. So when the close button is on the active class, we're going to say opacity one, visibility visible. That's it. And we control the transition time over here. And now we're going to release the code in our JavaScript because we have this close button. So we use that document query selector to find the close. And once the, uh, the name of that designer gets clicked on and the entire banner gets into the active class status, the close button should show. So, so here, we add the class name to that close button. And also, down here, this is how we uh, trigger that close off event. But so far, we're just going to leave it now. We, we, we want to see that uh, if we can successfully show the close button. Going back to our new project, click that, and you can see that close button is there. All right? But so far, if you click on it, it, it's not going to work because we haven't triggered that function yet. But it's there. Refresh it, doesn't disappear. This means that the close button appear and disappear is working. Now we're going to do the functionality of that close button. So here, again, I'm going to copy and paste in. This is how we trigger the, the back one. And this is how we close the banner, the code. We close the banner. Again, we found all the items, the grilled items, and we found all the descriptions. For each of the items, we're going to remove the active class. And for each of the description, we're going to remove the active class. Very simple logic, because we are closing off. Once the active class name gets removed off of each items and descriptions, and that thing will disappear. Okay? And we're going back to the original position. And the last but not least job is to release this part of the code, which is to trigger the click events of the close button. So we found the close button from the DOM using this line of code. And then we add a click events at events listener as a click. And once it's click on, we're going to remove the active class name of the close button as well. So this one gets removed off and going back to disappearance. And for each button, we're going to make sure we remove the active class as well. And because we want to make sure the name of that person shows as normal font size. Okay. And then last thing is going to recall this uh, banner close function that we created above over here. And once it's called, all of those uh, active status will be removed off as well. Okay. So we've done that. Let's just go back to the browser, reload it. Open it, close off, open it, close off, open it, close off. And now you can see that the hovering effects are all working good. Once I open it, expand it, and show the full detail of that pro of the designers with a much bigger uh, name. And once I click on the close off button, that thing disappear and it show the entire profile banner. Okay, so this is so far what we built in this video. And if we turn on the mobile view, you can see that the layout that comes at the grilled is already decent. Okay, um, you don't have to do a much bigger job to make the adjustment. Probably just change the font size, change the paddings in some specific part. And, and the thing you probably want to do more is this uh, position of the paragraph and also the, the name of designer when it's on the active status of, for the banner and also adjust the close button's position. So once you've done that, you will have a perfect uh, mobile view. This is the beauty of a grilled design. It wouldn't take you quite a lot of work for you to redesign the layout on the mobile, like how you did it with the flex. If you design things with the flex, I think the workload for the mobile is similarly heavy. However, since we designed the entire project with the grilled, all the things are suggested in the grilled column and row system. It's very, very smooth and very, very easy. Okay? So this is pretty much uh, that we can build so far for this project. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, like it, and share it. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video to show you more creative projects. Thank you all for watching.